Recently, I've had more days than not where I sit and scratch my head and I'm like, what in the ever-loving fuck is going on? So I decided to channel that into a painting and um, I'm inviting you on that journey. I have put, it's a three-part series. It's free for everyone over on Patreon, but I'm going to share with you here the paint mixing portion of the painting and then um, I'll put a link below in the description and you can either go directly there and watch all three lessons over on my Patreon or you can watch this one and decide if you'd like to paint with me over there on Patreon. But um, it is not for the weak hearted because I'm given the middle finger and that's what I wanted to paint and that's the expression I want to give and I think it's important for artists to be able to express. That is the role of artists in our society. It is for us to speak the things that others feel or speak things that we feel. So I'm inviting you today to join on the bandwagon of painting with me. We're going to do paint mixing. I'm using acrylics and then we're going to do a figurative photo of me but just you know you don't have you know, have to do my photo you can just watch along and then do something of your own but I just really think that watching an artist in their process sharing it is kind of valuable so come on over it's free and join me on over at my patreon Hello everyone. All right. So this is the part I think is actually the most exciting and I know maybe you won't agree. Um, but I really, um, have enjoyed my process of teaching myself how to mix paint, feeling a little bit more confident. And this is one of my go-to skin tone mixings. Um, I choose a brown, a red, a yellow, and a white. Um, Always, always I choose titanium white and yellow ochre, but sometimes I mix up the reds and the browns just to see if I can get a warmer or cooler, just play with the mixture. For today's mixing, I'm using titanium white, yellow ochre, cadmium red, and burnt umber light. I've also used like naphthol red. I've also used raw umber. So just, you know, whatever you have around is perfectly fine, and you're going to make a skin tone that will come out generally similar, but it might have more warmth to it or, or it might seem cooler and just play around with what you have. And if you certainly wanted to warm it up a little bit more, you can put more red and play around like that. Now, if you go to the golden digital mixer and I've done several videos on that, you can actually figure out how much of each color to put in there. But because I've done that before a dozen times, I am going to tell you right out that you will need more yellow than any of the colors here. And I'm also putting out on my palette open medium. What is open medium? Open medium allows you to reconstitute the paint a little bit as you're working. So if it dries out or it dries so quickly that you can't get the blend you want, a little bit of that medium in the paint will kind of give you a little bit of a wiggle room or a little extra time. It will also, you can probably spray with a little bit of water and reconstitute it if it's not totally dry yet. But if once it's totally dry, you can't reconstitute like watercolor. But it's just a little additive that I find helps me get the blends that I like. I do prefer painting portraits in oil, but I'm painting in acrylic and the paint dries quicker than oil. And so it's what I have to add into there to kind of make it easier for me. It's like my own personal crutch. All right. So I am mixing what I like to call a mother color. I've used this term before. If you've taken my classes, certainly you've heard this term before. The idea of a mother color is I'm going to take these three colors, not the white yet, because the white's going to be the tint, brown, red, and yellow. I'm going to mix those in different proportions. I already told you, more yellow than brown and red, to make something that I call the mother color, but also that I believe could be a skin color. Now, this skin color, if we're thinking of a value scale, might not be absolutely perfect middle ground. It might be closer to the darker side of things in this case instead of the lighter, but that's fine. If you've got a value scale, and when I say value scale, think about a gray scale where it starts at white and it gets a little bit gray or darker gray, darker gray until it gets to black. And if you had 10 of those spots on the scale, and if this was to be center, it would be a five, this might be something like a seven. So it's a little bit darker than the middle of the road grayscale color, but I'm okay with that. One of the things that I do to make sure this color is going to work for me is I will take it and tint it 
so that I can see like when this gets much lighter, do I feel like that skin color? And if I do, then I'm like, okay, this is a great color. So I feel like that works for skin. One of the other really cool things is no matter what your complexion is, you can make a mother color and either make it darker or lighter. What I mean by that? Let's say you are a dark skinned person. Maybe this is not your seven. This is your four. Then you would add brown or in this case, raw umber or dark Burnt umber light. Sorry, I can't even figure that out. Burnt umber light. Add more of that, more of that, more of that until you get to the darkest complexion that you want. Because I'm painting myself, I am not dark skinned. So this is a good seven for me and I need to make more lighter values. So my six, five, four, three, twos, and ones will take this mother color and have white added to it as opposed to making several variations of a darker value of it. I hope that makes sense. This is kind of a quick synopsis of the color mixing, but I wanted to make sure I cleared that up. And if you have questions, just put them in the um, comments. No worries, I'll, ask, I'll answer them all. You saw me add a little bit of that medium into there that I added into the mother color. This makes it an open medium. You can actually buy golden open paints, which is basically the same paint with this medium in it. Um, and I'm adding that to the mother color and then making all of the other values from the mother color. Again, value is a, the word used to measure the intensity of light or darkness, shadow and light. I added to my mother color. You saw me, I put my mother color in the mix, but I also have a little bit of that mother on my palette. Sorry, I put the, the mother color on my Stay Wet palette. Still have a little bit more on my glass palette and I'm mixing some burnt umber light into that to make a darker value, perhaps an eight or a nine. This is a darker value than the current mother color. I took the mother color and just added brown. I don't go to that red again. Um, and if I do, it's because I'm trying to play with a, a tint of a color or a bias of a color. I want something that's just a little bit more pink, but I don't want the mother color to be. So I take this mother color and I mix brown to make it darker and I mix white to make it lighter, and I'll have what I call steps, different values pre-mixed. You can see here, we've got the mother color, which I'm saying is kind of like a seven on a scale from one to 10. And then I have this next value, which is darker. Let's call this an eight. Um, I don't really need to go too dark. I'm not that dark. Um, and I can use the regular color out of the tube. And when I'm painting, full disclosure, I do decide that like my glasses that I'm painting and some of the shadowed areas needed to be darker than the burnt umber light. And I did pull out some raw umber later in the painting, but the skin itself does not have anything but these four colors in it. I'm putting the red on my palette just off to the side because it's usable paint and I don't want to waste it. So I just put it on my palette. Now I'm taking some more of that mother color you can see me pull it to the middle and then I'm gonna add some white into it. This is making the mixture of these four colors, my mother color, or the mixture of the three colors, um, lighter. Now I'm working in lighter values. And if we call that mother color seven, then maybe I'm making a five or a four or three. I, I usually, when I teach in person or even when I teach my online lessons, I typically will do this and make all 10 values. If you're a beginner painter, I can't stress to you how valuable it is to pre-mix and to predetermine your value scale. I think it is the most valuable when doing portraits because it is so important to have consistency in shadow and lighting. When you're doing flowers, who cares? A little off color here, mix on the fly. I think it actually makes your florals look better. But faces, if you get that wrong mixture, and if you're really not comfortable painting faces, having the value of paints already done for you helps you understand the light and the shadow parts of the helps you find them and then helps you kind of eliminate or determine where the light color goes and where the dark goes. Um, I call that mapping. If you've ever taken one of my portrait classes, this is probably the most vital portion of the teaching. Um, it's something that when I figured it out made my painting so much easier. So I'm again, I'm making these values in here. I'm taking the same mother color 
the mixture of the yellow ochre, the cadmium red, and the burnt umber light, and I'm adding white to make it lighter. And I will keep adding more white um, to make it lighter still as I'm working my way down closer to what I call the one on the value scale. Now, when I'm teaching um, in person, actually online over Zoom, when I do these mixes, it makes it a lot easier when students make their own value scale and we make a grid of 10 blank spots and we put white as number one and we put in this case the darkest color would be burnt umber light as number 10. We mix a mother color and we decided, well, I decided in this one that was going to be my seven, but the mother color can be anywhere on your grid, especially on your complexion. I decided in this case it was going to be seven and then I would map in eight, nine, six, five, four, three, two, by just making the color either darker or lighter as we make a value scale. And that gives us a language when I am teaching that this area looks like a three, and this area looks like a five, and this area looks like an eight. And it doesn't matter what your color values are, whether you are darker complected or lighter complected, a seven is still going to be a seven, a six is still going to be a six. It's all a really great way to take the math out of painting. It, um, I, for lack of a better thing, dumbs it down, but it actually dumbed it down to a place that I understood it. Um, I had taken, God, if I even told you how many classes I've taken on color, color theory, theory the color wheel, I just, bleh, it's gross. It just, I learned nothing. And this was the way that I synthesized all that information and came up with my own kind of way to process it. And I hope it means something to you. I hope it clarifies. Now, I'm not making 10. I don't need to. And when I teach students that are brand new, I do think they need to. They need to see it. They need to fully understand how to mix it. I've been painting for a while like this, so maybe five different values for me would be good because I know I could mix a two and a four to get a three. I know that I can mix a seven and a five to get a six. I, I can do it on the fly, but if you're struggling, you can make more values. But if you look there, I've got one as a white, I've got the burnt umber light as my 10, and then the other values in between. So go ahead. Mix your colors and then meet me back here for uh, painting.